lecture we will discuss what is the life cycle of a thread. We already saw how we can create and start a thread, but there's more to it. As I said, to be competent in working with threads, avoid problems or solve already created problems, you must have a pretty good idea how threads work internally. The life cycle of a thread is the stage transition a thread goes through from its birth to its death. A thread is always in one of the following states during its life cycle. New, runnable, timed waiting, waiting, blocked or terminated. On this slide we'll briefly explain what each state means and then we'll continue with a complete diagram. New is the state of a newly created thread that has not been started yet. Runnable is the state of a thread when a thread is either running or waiting for CPU time. Time to waiting is the state in which a thread enters when it's waiting for another thread to perform some action for a specified amount of time. Waiting is the state in which a thread enters when it's waiting for another thread to perform some actions without any time limit. Block is the state in which a thread enters when it's waiting to acquire a monitor lock to enter or re-enter some piece of code which is currently used by another thread and is guarded by some sort of synchronization. This may sound a bit cryptic at the moment, but no worries, we'll decrypt it. Terminated is the state in which a thread enters when it's completed its execution. The thread class contains an enum state, which defines a thread's potential states during any given point of time which are having the same constant's name as the states we had here. Now let's see the diagram of a life cycle of a thread. During its life cycle a thread moves from one state to another following the diagram here. Since one CPU can only execute one thread, all other threads are in some other states. A thread is always in one of those states. In the beginning, we start with a thread in a new state. After the start method is called, it transitions to runnable. In runnable state, a thread can either be ready to run, meaning it's waiting for CPU time, or running, meaning it's already passed to the CPU. From runnable state, the thread can go in one of the following, timed waiting, waiting, blocked, or terminated, but never to new. Let's continue and see what each trade state is in more detail. As I said, the new state is quite simple. This is the state in which a thread is right after an instance of thread class is created. The start method has not yet been called on the instance. Only start can be called on a thread in this state. Otherwise, an illegal thread state exception will be thrown thread can only go from new to runnable, and it can never go back to new after the start method is called. This means a thread can only be used once. Then we have the runnable state. As already mentioned, at first a thread enters this state once the thread method start is called. Thread in this state are either running or waiting for CPU time. So this state can be divided into two sub-states, ready to run and running. When a thread is ready for execution and is waiting for the scheduler to pass it to the CPU, we say it's ready to run. As I said, this is logical stop substate, not a real one. The state is still runnable. Running is a thread that is already passed to the CPU and its run method is being executed. A thread can return to being ready to run either if the CPU releases it so it can execute another thread or if the yield method is called on this thread, which hints the scheduler that this thread is willing to yield its current use of processor. There are other ways that a thread can be placed waiting for CPU time. Let's see them. To do that, we should look at other states, for example, timed waiting. A thread 
enters this state when it's waiting for another thread to execute some action within a specified amount of time. This can be done by either calling sleep, wait or join method with a specified amount of time. What can happen from that state and where can a thread go? Since there are three ways to enter timed waiting, a thread can re-enter runnable state if sleep is called, only when the specified amount of time passes, if wait is called, if the specified amount of time passes or notify or notify all is called before the time passes, or if join is called, if the thread on which the method is called terminates or time passes. Then once a thread re-enters runnable state, it will go back to ready to run and wait for the scheduler to pass it to a free CPU. Then we have waiting state. A thread enters this state when it's waiting for some other thread to execute some action. This can be done by either calling wait or join method without a specified amount of time. Again, since we can go in waiting state in two ways, there are two ways to re-enter runnable. If wait is called, notify or notify all must be called for this object, or if join is called, the thread on which the method is called should terminate. Again, once the thread re-enters runnable, it will be waiting for CPU time. Now this is the state you will probably not understand now, but you will once we explain how thread synchronization works. A thread enters a blocked state when it is waiting for a monitor lock and is trying to access a section of the code that is locked by some other thread. Let me explain again on very abstract level how this works. Java provides a mechanism by which only a single thread can use a piece of code to avoid problematic situations. Usually this piece of code is locked by a specific object called lock or monitor. Once a thread acquires the lock for a specific place in the code, no other thread can execute this code until the lock is released. Threads waiting for a lock are blocked threads. Again, this will be discussed in detail in the next lectures. The thread goes to runnable and is waiting for a CPU time once unblocked. As an end, we have the terminate state. A thread goes to this state when the run method of thread completes its execution. Once a thread goes to state terminated, there is no way back to any other states and the thread is considered dead. There is something I omitted in the diagrams. During any state of a thread, the stop method may be called and it might terminate the thread. But this method is deprecated and according to the Java doc, is not safe to use. So naturally, we won't discuss this possibility. As of now, you're probably thinking, hey, we are talking about some methods here and the only one I know is start, to start the thread and then run to hold the logic. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Witslabs. Success certified.